Would you open your Bibles? We're going to receive our evening offering and uh, give you a chance to raise your income. Thank you, Lord. Oh, I tell you what, I, I, I made a determination when Gloria and I were so broke we couldn't pay attention. And uh, $24,000 in bad debt and not a dime in the world. <laughs> oh, man. And we were so thrilled. I'll tell you what, we, we got all the word of faith. <laughs> and we were so thrilled. And uh, I, 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 I made a, 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 a firm decision. I just decided, praise God. I'll never let an offering get by me. That won't put something in there. If it ain't, and, and I, I take the, tear the button off my shirt. Whatever it takes. If something's going to go in that bucket, praise God. Amen. Happy birthday, Jerry. <laughs> Happy birthday to Jerry Moore. <laughs> Stand up, darling. Yeah, please do. Stand up. Oh, come on, come on. Pastor Jerry Moore from Miami, Florida. Glory to God. Can I tell them how many? Huh? Why not? I'm proud of you. <laughs> no, you, you ain't going to believe this. Come here, Jerry. Come here. She's four years older than I am. She is 85. And still going. Going like a house of fire. <laughs> and intending to keep going. Yeah, amen. Yeah, right. Romping and stomping. That's right. On the devil. That's right. Whooping him up. <laughs> we'll do it. Father, thank you for this warrior of the gospel. We give you praise and honor for her. And we thank you that she's divinely healthy all the time. And we love her. She's an inspiration to all of us. And we give you praise and honor for the mighty work that's being done in South Florida. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy birthday, girl. We love you. you. Amen. You only got what? Let's see, uh, 35 more to go. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Now, I, I want you to keep an eye for the word praise. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon and with other besides the uh, Ammonites against Jehoshaphat to battle. There came some that told Jehoshaphat saying, there cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side of Syria. And behold, they be in, in has a Zon Tamar. Did you get that? <laughs> has a Zon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord. That's what you do when you're afraid. You don't put up with the fear. You set yourself to seek God. And proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven and rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? 
and in thine hand there is not power and might so that none is able to withstand thee. Now that's praise. Amen. He's not just praying. Do you notice what he's doing? He's praising God. He, he hadn't asked for help yet. He started off praising him. Art not thou our God who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now behold the children of, of Ammon and Moab, Mount Seir, whom thou wouldst not let Israel invade. And when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do but our eyes are on you. This is what happened. This is what you do when you get into financial difficulties. This is what you do when you're deep in debt and don't know how to get out. Praise God. This is what you do. This is what you do when you got plenty of money. This is what you do. <laughs> Amen. Then upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, son of Benaiah, son of Jael, son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. Now, when the Spirit of the Lord comes in the midst of the congregation, something is about to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he always comes particularly when you start bragging on him <laughs> and you start praising him and you start telling him how big he is and how wonderful he is. And you start telling him, you're not going to let that happen to us, are you? Oh yeah, he shows up. That's a good place to say amen right there. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he said, hearken you all, ye all Judah and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou, King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, Be not afraid or dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Be not afraid of this thing that's attacked your household. Be not afraid of this sickness or this disease. Huh? Don't be being afraid of that. No. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because our God is the biggest thing in the valley. There ain't nothing in that valley to be afraid of. Besides that, the shadow of a dog never bit anybody. It's the shadow of death. <laughs> oh, glory to God. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. Tomorrow you go down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and you shall find them at the end of the brook where the wilderness of Jeuel. 
before the wilderness of Jehu. You shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. You see it? You see it? They fell before him, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of the Kohites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. Boy, there's a lot of praising going on here. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, now what's what's this this, the, the spot that the Lord wanted you to see tonight? Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his his prophets, so shall you prosper. Now listen, I, I, I don't know how long And how many times I read this, I thought, I thought God told them to appoint singers. How many of you thought that? Well, where's the rest of you raising your hand? (laughs) The rest of you just sat there and lied, that's all. (laughs) But look, no. When he had consulted the people, they decided to do this. They made the decision. I tell you, that's a thrill. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord. And that should praise the beauty of his holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Say it, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Again, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. Oh man, glory to God. And when they began to sing and to praise, whoa, the Lord God went into action. (sighs) No, Lord, I never thought of that. (laughs) Could be, could be, that Paul and Silas, but particularly Paul, a Bible scholar, could be he had this on his heart and mind in that dungeon that night in Philippi. Huh? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> sure. Amen. He must have because the Lord just dropped that in me. I never had that thought before just a moment ago. When they began to sing, And to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Mount Seir, utterly to slay and destroy them. Amen. Amen. The devil ain't got any sense. If he'd had any sense, he knew he'd have known better. Than, he'd have known he couldn't overthrow God. That's stupid, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
And when they had made an end of the inhabitants, they made an end of them. You see that? They made an end of them. There wasn't none of them left. <laughs> Everyone helped to destroy another. And when Judah came, <laughs> I mean, I tell you, the joy of the Lord is all over me. And when, when Judah came toward the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, there were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Mm. When Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away the spoil of them, they found among them in abundance both riches with the dead bodies and precious jewels, which they stripped off for themselves more than they could carry away. And they were three days in gathering the spoil. It was so much. Now I have a question. I want to know why these idiots brought all their money to battle. <laughs> That's a hard one to figure. Well, we need to take all our jewelry with us. You know, oh yeah, oh yeah, we need to take it with us because somebody will have to steal it. <laughs> this is what you do. This is a 100% guarantee model for success. Right there. Right there. How much more powerful is it today when we are filled with the Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Don't discount your angels. Hebrews chapter one, quickly. We're not saying enough about this. We're not talking about this enough. We're not studying about it enough. First chapter, verse 13. But to which of the angels said he at any time, sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? Whoa, we're not talking about this enough. Are you commanding your ministering spirit? I didn't know I had one. Jesus said, talking about these little children, that their angels are ever before the face of the Father. Well, you don't lose your angel just because you grow up. Amen. Amen. Ministering spirits. Amen. Say it. Ministering spirits sent forth to minister for me. But now they, they, they are, of course, spirit beings. They don't have authority to work on their own. You're the one with the name. You're the one with the authority. Now, you know good and well, uh, the apostle Paul proved in his writings that asking God to get the devil off of you won't work. Amen. No, there's nowhere in there that it says uh, to pray and God will get the devil off of you. It says you cast him out. You have authority. You have the name. Well, that name doesn't cover just the bad side. It covers the good side. Amen. It covers the good side. This is exciting stuff now. Nancy Dufresne, are you still here, babe? I guess she had to go back today. She, um, she pastors in California. They have Sunday morning service. Her husband, Ed, who's, who's gone home to be with the Lord now, close friend, just, oh man, he's one of my best friends. And um, 
uh, Ed was having a, a situation, a financial situation uh, in the church. And <laughs> he had, he, he, he they, they, they were in such a jam that help me with this now, the Lord. They, they had a they had a lease purchase agreement on the church. Now, over the period of time, the church had increased in value that the bank didn't want them to meet the note. And it was due. <laughs> and they had to have $300,000 a note. The whole, the whole, to finish off the, the whole thing on the church was 500000 And it had gotten up to the point where it was worth three or $4 million. But this time, the, the bank was hoping to, it wouldn't make it. They had to have 300000 immediately. Well, he was, he was speaking somewhere else and he was in, a, in his hotel room. And of course, you know, he'd been praying about that. <laughs> and he said, this is back in the days of just the old mechanical keys, you know. And, uh, and he heard the front door of his motel room open. And he thought, oh man, somebody's giving somebody my key and they come in my room. And he turned around. <laughs> he got his eyes wide open. He turned around and the ceiling disappeared. And here's two of the biggest men he's ever seen in his life. He said, if the ceiling hadn't disappeared, their heads would have been stuck out through the ceiling. They were so big. And they're standing there. Swords drawn. He said, <laughs> can't you just see it doing it? Who are you? <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> they, they said, we're your prosperity angels. He said, what are you doing here? <laughs> they said, we have come to help you in your situation. He said, glory to God. And they're standing there. He said, what are you waiting on? They said, the command. He said, go. <laughs> they disappeared and here come the roof back. Now they're in, on the last, that was several weeks before. They're on the last day. They got to have 300,000 today and they don't have it. Ed and his attorney are walking around the church office trying to figure out, a, trying to find a loophole somewhere, you know, because and, and the, the, his secretary said, there's a man out here who wants to see you. He said, I don't want to see you. He said, I don't want to see anybody right now. She said, I think you better see him. So he came in. He said, he still had a jogging suit on. <laughs> he said, uh, I heard you preach one time and you scare me. I don't like the way you preach. But he said, I was jogging this morning. Can you see that angel running there with him? And he said, I, something like this. I don't understand why I'm doing this. But I had to get this to you as quick as I could. Well, he didn't even change clothes. It's a check for $300,000. <laughs> well, of course, you know, there was lots of praise going on in the office. Now, 
Sometime later, I, I don't remember now how much, but not a whole lot of time went by. And they were in a meeting and the man, somebody else was, was, was uh, ministering and receiving the offering that night. And this man was on the front row. And, and Ed was back over here. And so the man is receiving the offering. He's telling, and, and, and he said, there, there's, there's somebody here that needs to obey God. And, and he said, I, I believe it's you. And so he points at this guy. And Ed said, no, no, he already has. He already has. But, but he can't see Ed waving at him. He said, yeah, it's me. He said, the original figure I got was 500,000 and I missed God. That angel wouldn't let him alone, man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Paid the church off. Take advantage of your angels. Listen to God. Listen to a question about it. Lord, is there something here my ministering spirit needs to be taken care of here? Oh, wow. yeah. Hallelujah. And if you're driving down the road one of these days and it kind of flashes across you, uh, I need to send Brother Moore about $50. That's Brother Moore's angel. You get home, you do it. <laughs> well, Brother Cole, I thought it was the Holy Ghost. What made you think that? Because you don't know anything about your angels. Huh? Amen. They assist Jesus yes, sir. in surgery. Amen. Praise God. I heard a man testify. He said, I woke up one night and there's a man standing there. I had his hands in my chest. He said, I woke up and he, and he said, it's all right. Go on back to sleep. He said, I went back to sleep. I got up the next morning. I had a new heart. Amen. I met the man in, in uh, Lagos, Nigeria there at Brother uh, Oyedipo's church. And he was a young man that uh, we had been there the year before. And, and he said, he, he called me, uh, Bishop called me. He said, I got something I got to show you. And uh, <laughs> if you, hey, David, see if we can roust out that picture back there. I'd like to show that. And uh, there was just an, an outpouring hit that church just right after we had actually, it, it started. All right, I'm going to show you something about that picture up there now. And uh, there was 130,000 people came into that church and just, uh, just an avalanche of people. Well, you could imagine how busy the pastoral staff was. They're working night and day. You got, I don't care how many people you got on staff. You got 130,000 new ones come in there. It's a busy time. Well, this young man had uh, a gunshot wound, had destroyed his elbow. And so they did um, elbow replacement with that thing Bishop's got in his hand there. And the Lord said, you go to bed tonight and get a good night's sleep. You've been working hard for me tonight. I'm going to work for you. Now, this thing had given him pain ever since he had it in there. It just was a uh, just constant pain all the time. He woke up the next morning and that device was lying in the bed next to him and he had a brand new elbow joint. Now, the next year, Gloria and I met him. And they took a picture of us and Gloria had hold of his elbow. <laughs> hey, there it is. See that? Well, I did too. Amen. Now, what did that? Well, God did that. Yeah, but his angel. His angel. They are the physician's assistants. Brother Copeland, how do you know that? I have this book. 
<laughs> oh, hallelujah! And I first began to learn it from Brother Hagin when the, the, the Lord told him, said, quit praying about money. Don't come ask me for money. He said, all the money's down there. <laughs> he said, first, bind the devil. Establish the amount. And I've learned since that you don't establish the amounts you need. What's the matter with you? <laughs> you don't have any limits on it. I, there was a guy who said to me one time, he said, Brother Copeland, he said, uh, we just don't really, uh, uh, the prosperity message just really never meant anything to us because just, just me and my little family and we don't require very much. He said, in fact, we only require about $500, about $500 a month. I said, you're the stingiest man I believe I ever met in my life. <laughs> what? I said, what about your pastor? What about your church? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Yeah. If all you want is 500 a month, that's fine. But believe for 10,000 a month and so 9,500 of them. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. yeah, man. Hey, come on. Get your head out of the sand and get it up in the clouds of heaven. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. See, you and I, we're prosperity agents. We're supposed to have money. We're supposed to prosper. We're not supposed to be in debt. We're supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be in good health all the time, all the time, because there's been a lot of sick, broke people out there. Hallelujah. Well, you got to, what we read in 2 Chronicles 20 tonight, ha ha, whoa, follow the model. Jeremy, follow the model. <clears throat> and Jesus told Brother Hagin, he said, now I'm not, I'm not holding back on you. It's the devil that's holding back on you. He said, bind him and then put a faith claim on the amount and then command your ministering spirits to go get it. He said, when I first heard that, he said, oh, he said, the first time I did it, I did it with fear and trembling. He said, we needed $150 a month. Uh, a week to, for my budget. And he said, that is unheard of back in those days. And he gave the example. <laughs> he was preaching in, bless you. He was preaching in one area. And, and <laughs> this fella kept telling him, he said, we had a cotton crop failure. We had a tomato crop failure. <laughs> and so and Brother Hagin said, if I'd have told him $150 a week, he said, why, even Jesus couldn't get that. <laughs> we had a tomato crop failure. We had a cotton crop failure. <laughs> so finally, Brother Hagin said, you just don't say anything. Just say this is Brother Hagin's offering. You won't get anything. We had a cotton crop. Now, now he said, no, man, don't, 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 don't say anything. And he said, if, if you, if you hadn't got the, that, that kind of faith, just get neutral. Let me do the believing. <laughs> just be neutral. Amen. Amen. And they absolutely had a financial landslide. And that guy said later, I never 
would have believed it. We had a cotton crop failure. <laughs> we had a tomato crop failure. <laughs> that you, I don't remember, Keith, do you remember the thing? The church was something like doubled during that time. It, it was just amazing the things that happened. Right. But, but he said, I learned right then that my angels had a lot to do with this. Bind the devil. Lay hold by faith what you need and what you desire. Yes, sir. Well, God only promised to meet our needs. He doesn't promise to meet our wants. Well, I guess we just need to take the 23rd Psalm out of the book. <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd, shall not want. <laughs> And that's not the only scripture. I just don't have time to give you the other. Find them for yourself. Amen. Amen. Set your desires in the area of ministry life. And then don't go out and maneuver around trying to make it happen. That's right. That's right. Mm -mm. Don't be doing that. Let Jesus take care of it. He'll, let me let you in on a little secret. He'll give you a whole lot more than you're worth. <laughs> I'm proof of that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. I think it's time to give the Lord praise, don't you? Hallelujah.